In this application that we're building, it's a chat with my data application that allows asking for detailed information from a 125 page PDF that contains specific information about a shipping company called Flex LNG. For each answer that it provides, the app provides references to sources to ensure accuracy. Some of the key features include support for multi-users with user authentication. So multiple users can use this application. Also, uh, it supports speech to text, which can be configured to recognize over 20 languages, including English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, etc. It also supports chat flow persistence. So chat sessions for each user are saved. Lastly, the application logic is built completely visually with no code. So let me give you a quick demo. I'm going to log in as admin. And then I see a welcome page. Immediately, I can use speech to text. Who is the CEO of FLNG? This is going to query my backend. And I'm going to get the information and the sources from the original PDF. How does FLNG make its money? What are some risks for the company? As you go through different uh, sessions, it's going to save the chat persistently on the left. So let's uh, dive into the architecture of this application. So on the front end side, we have a uh, front end built with a framework called Chainlet. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, very shortly. And then it calls into the back end, which is Flowwise. That's where we visually draw out uh, the application logic, which then calls into the OpenAI large language model. So what is Chainlet? So Chainlet is a framework that allows for fast development of ChatGPT-like applications using Python. And it easily uh, gives us out-of-the-box chat interface and has built-in support for advanced features such as data persistence and speech-to-text. It also supports uh, multi-thread for uh, complex use cases, uh, as well as uh, visualize uh, reasoning steps along the way if your um, AI flow uh, involves multiple large language calls. And then it also has uh, prompt playgrounds. This is just, just an example, but there's many other features, including uh, multimodal support. And, and uh, so it's a very feature uh, rich framework that uh, we can use to build front end. It also has uh, a lot of integrations uh, with popular uh, frameworks such as uh, Langchain, uh, Lambda Index, Haystack, as well as uh, OpenAI Assistance. And then recently, they've come up with custom front end so that you can use uh, a custom React front end uh, to work with uh, your Chainlet uh, Python code. So what are we going to do to build this application? So on the backend side, we're going to use uh, Flowwise. And we're going to take a few steps on uh, how to build the, the Flowwise uh, part of it. So uh, because this is multi-user, uh, we're going to um, uh, pay for uh, a, a persistent uh, server. So I'm going to deploy it with the blueprint uh, that uh, we're going to uh, uh, deploy onto render. And then this costs about $7 a month. We're going to then uh, draw the flow and then do some unit testing and then uh, expose the endpoint after that. All right, so after we build the back end, we're going to uh, build a front end. So the front end, as I mentioned, we're going to be using Chainlet. So there's going to be uh, some uh, sample code there that we're going to use primarily as a template, as a boilerplate. Um, so all we need to use it essentially is set some environment variables and just use the template. So we won't actually need to uh, code itself, but we can do a bit of walkthrough just so that you can get a gist of uh, what the code does. So what we're going to do here is we're going to fork uh, the Ripplet that I've created. Uh, so then after we fork it, we uh, set a couple of environment variables uh, via secrets. And then 
in that environment variable uh, settings, we're going to connect the FlowWise chat flow. We're going to then configure persistence and um, and, and the login. And then uh, finally, we're going to deploy this Riplet right uh, within uh, Riplet.com. Right? That's cost about $6 a month. And again, uh, we're doing uh, this so that we can have multiple, multiple users and have that uh, persistence. All right, so with uh, that as uh, the, the context, uh, let's dive into the build. So the first thing we're going to do is to create my FlowWise instance on the service called Render. So I'm going to go into this um, my dashboard and then go into the blu Blueprints section. I'm going to create a new Blueprint. And inside this Blueprint, I'm going to connect to this repository. So this repository uh, will have uh, all the configuration that is needed uh, to be able to um, instantiate a FlowWise persistent service. I'm going to hit that and continue. I'm just going to create a name for it. It's going to be my chainlet FlowWise instance. And it's going to um, uh, create it under this name, FlowWise Docker Render. And then it's going to um, default to the starter. So the starter uh, is uh, $7 a month. So it's when I press apply, it's going to create this and it's going to have a persistent service. So now it's started and we'll check back in about uh, 15 minutes or so uh, for this uh, service to be created. So after about uh, 18 minutes, uh, the build is done, the, the deploy is done, and then you should see this uh, message and the service is live. So we'll go ahead now and then start the service. And now I have this uh, persistent service uh, that I can use for multi multiple users. So why don't we go ahead and start building? So I'm going to start and add new. I'm going to um, start dropping some components onto the canvas. So I'm going to be using a PDF file. So this PDF file uh, will be this 125-page uh, document uh, for uh, that um, is from the 2022 annual report of Flex LNG. So quite a long document. And I'm going to upload this file here. All right, so that is my document loader. I'm going to then add that into my vector store. So I'm going to use uh, the QGen vector store. And I'm going to connect to document here. I'm going to add in my text splitter. And I'm going to use a slightly larger chunk size. Uh, it gives uh, better results uh, for this particular data set. Configure my credentials. And in this uh, cluster I've created here, it's uh, it's empty. Uh, so I'm going to uh, get the URL for it. And then I'm just going to give it a name, FLNG. Right. Now I'm going to uh, group things together, create my embeddings. Also going to create my credentials here. Back to my embeddings. All right, and I'm going to lastly drop another chain to it, my conversational retrieval chain. And 
I'm going to hook up uh, my vector store to it. And then, again, my large language model, I'm going to use the chat GPT one. I'm going to use uh, a slightly different model for this one. I'm going to use one with uh, same ChatGPT uh, 3.5, but I'm going to use one with the one with a larger context window, uh, just so that uh, uh, it, it allows me to get more information uh, per retrieval to get better quality output. So I'll set this into here. And then I'll just change the temperatures to zero. It's more factual, and one is more creative. And I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to say F1G. Okay. So just to recap, so what I'm going to do is load this PDF file here. I'm going to split it. Uh, and this uh, um, document, this 125-page uh, uh, PDF, will be split into uh, chunk sizes of 1,500 uh, each. And then uh, I'm going to store that uh, in the process called upserting in this Qdrent uh, database. And then I'm going to now uh, hook this up into this component that allows me then to query it, All right? So I'm just going to go ahead here and upsert the vector database. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what this is going to do is now uh, create this collection here. All right. So I'll refresh. OK. Let me just refresh here. And it's created the vector store, or created the collection of the vector store. And it's put that into my vector store, right? All, all 125 pages. All right. So now that that's done, I can start using it and querying it. So I'll just give it a very simple query. Who is the CEO of MG? All right. So now it's going to uh, query this vector store. And it's going to give me uh, this information here. All right. So I've unit tested it now. And now I'm going to take this. Uh, uh, Python uh, tab here, and I'm going to copy this API URL. So I'll copy this into safe place, and I'll be using this in the front end side so that I can uh, call into the, the back end with this URL. OK, now that we've built the flow wise part, we're going to move to the chainlet part. So the chainlet, the first thing we're going to do is create the striplet, and then I'm going to uh, take a tour of um, the source file itself, uh, just to give you a flavor of how the source code is built. Uh, and just we're just going to use a template, uh, use it as a template. So all we're going to do is then uh, set some, some environment variables in the secrets, and then we'll be able to use this application. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is create uh, a fork of this replet. So I'm going to go to this URL, and then I'm going to uh, create a fork for it. All right, so I'll just have an instance called uh, two. I'm just going to make it public. And it's going to create a fork for me. OK, so now I have my own uh, instance here. Uh, but then what I'm going to do uh, next is I'm going to now um, uh, create the environment variables that I need to uh, work with this um, Ripplet. So I notice here, I have this flowwise uh, chat flow URL. So this is going to be from uh, the URL that I got from uh, the flowwise backend. So this is one of the environment variables. Now there's a, a couple others that we'll need to set. Um, and I'll, I'll just uh, type it here so that you can see. So, so there's this one here uh, called uh, Chainlet API Key. Uh, so we'll uh, create that in a minute. And then the last one that we'll need to set is uh, called chainlet uh, auth secret. I'll just type this here. OK, so uh, this is uh, another environment variable that 
uh, is needed uh, for uh, the, the data persistence. Okay, so let's uh, get this one. How do we get this one? Okay, so we need to log into this uh, uh, chainlet.io, uh, cloud.chainlet.io, and I'm going to create a new project. It's called FLNG2. I'll create that. And then uh, I have a default key. So I'm going to save this default key here. And I'm going to use that uh, to set uh, for my uh, chainlet API key. And then uh, the third environment variable that I need to set is this chainlet auth secret. And what I do here is I need to execute this command to create it. So I'm going to create my secret here. Okay. Chainlet create secret. All right. So I'll copy this. And this will give me my third environment variable that I need to set. OK, so just a, a quick recap. I'm going to uh, set three environment variables, uh, one to point to this uh, backend to URL. Two is this chain the API key, uh, which uh, I created uh, going into this cloud.chainlet.io. So I created this. And then the third is this uh, chainlet auth secret, which I just created using uh, this uh, chainlet create secret. OK, so I'll just copy this. And I have my three environment variables. Right. So what I am going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and deploy this. All right. I'm going to uh, set this up. And I'm going to choose a lower tier. This is sufficient. So this is going to cost about $6 a month. And I'm going to purchase and deploy deploy this project. And the command I'm going to use here is chainlet run. And the file is main.ly. Run command. Right. And I'm going to set my environment variables. So as I mentioned uh, from before, I've uh, got three environment variables. So the first environment variable I'm going to set is the one that's pointing to my backend chat flow. I copied that after I uh, saved the instance uh, of the chat flow backend. So I'm going to save that. The chainlet API key as well as the chainlet auth key is used for persistence. So I created that just earlier. So I'll just copy that in. Key. And then the chainlet auth key. Okay. So I'll go ahead and uh, copy this here. All right. So I've set these three environment variables, and now I'm going to go ahead and deploy. So this takes about two minutes, and we'll come back after it's deployed. Now that it's uh, deployed my app, I'm going to um, uh, launch it. So what I've done is uh, deploy the front end with uh, Chainlet, and then it's uh, connecting to my back end with Flowwise. So I'll go ahead and launch it. So it brings up my Chainlet app, and I'm going to log in. So I've just set the default uh, user. And then it logs me into my home page and describes what the chatbot does. And I'm just going to uh, start using it. Who is the CEO of FLNG? All right, so it's going into my uh, backend. And here's the information that it uh, 
it found that uh, supports the evidence here. I'll ask it another question, just to make sure everything's working properly. How does FLNG make its money? Right, so it generates revenue through uh, committed time charter revenues. That's correct. So, uh, so this information here, All right? And then uh, as uh, you uh, have more chat sessions, uh, it gives you a chat history. So this app is now working. So now that we've uh, shown how the application uh, works and how it's uh, put together, let me just uh, uh, do a quick dive into uh, the source code just to give you a flavor of how this works. Uh, it's not that long. It's uh, only about 60 lines of code. Uh, the main part of it is this uh, code here on message. So every time there's a, a uh, message that user types, this is called. And inside here is where I uh, call into the uh, Flowwise backend. Right? So there's some uh, code here to get the source documents and the like. But um, you can take a quick look at uh, uh, this file. But uh, it's not very complex, uh, but uh, this is where you would make modifications for uh, additional capabilities. So just to wrap up, uh, we built this application using Blowwise and Chainlit, and we went through all the different steps in order to build an application that persists and uh, allows for multiple users to uh, use it.